Hey everybody, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and today I'm going to show you how to build your very own Neo Geo XU4 using a Neo Geo X docking case along with an Odroid XU4 single board computer. So this is powered by the Odroid XU4 using a RetroPie build that was compiled together by the Odroid Retro Arena team. And the theme I'm using is a custom theme called the Hursty Sterling. And if you're looking to download this image, this is available on the Odroid Retrovina website, and I'll make sure to post the link down below. And just to let you know, there's no games that's included with this image, but there's a lot of things that's pre-configured and set up, so for the most part, all you have to do is add games. Here's a look at the Neo Geo X docking case, and this is not a console, although it does look a lot like the original Neo Geo AES. What this actually is, is a docking station for a Neo Geo handheld device. And how this originally worked is it opened up and then the Neo Geo handheld would plug in inside this and that would allow you to play games on your TV. So it kind of works like the Nintendo Switch when you put the Switch into the docking station, that allows you to play games on your TV. And this was originally released back in December of 2012. And this was not an official SNK product, but it was licensed by them. Unfortunately, the Neo Geo X ended up being a failure, and SNK themselves ended up pulling the plug due to quality issues. But there is good news because you can buy just the Neo Geo X docking case for right around 40 bucks. And with this docking station, you can transform this into a functional console by installing an Odroid XU4 inside this. And for anyone out there who is interested, I did make a build video on how to make this a functional console using a Raspberry Pi 3, which is a little bit simpler method because it's just plug and play. There's no extra mod involved. So I'll make sure to post a link to that video down below. And the Raspberry Pi 3 is more than capable of playing most of your Neo Geo games without any issues. But if you decide to use the Odroid XU4, it is quite a bit more powerful and you have the option to play more powerful systems like the Sega Saturn and Dreamcast. But when using the Odroid XU4 with this case, there's gonna be some mods involved to the docking case itself involving some drilling and cutting. Unfortunately, the XU4 does not fit inside this case very well without making these mods. If you try to close the lid with the XU4 inside of it, you'll have a hard time latching it. But I did figure out some solutions to solve this and get that case to close properly, along with being able to fit a portable hard drive inside here too. So the first thing we want to do is get this case to open up all the way. And how we're going to do that is we're going to pry on this gear right here and pry that towards the right. This gear has a little tab on the left side of it, and when you pry that to the right, it allows it to release so you can open that lid all the way. For myself, I ended up just cutting off that tab so I can open this case all the way up whenever I choose, but I don't really recommend you do that because what happens is, is the gear comes off alignment every time you open it all the way, and then you have to pop that gear back into place when you put it back down. So I recommend you just leave that tab in place. Now there's gonna be nine screws that'll have to be removed to remove this inner lid inside the case. So we're gonna remove all these screws located right here. So this should be ready to remove now, but keep in mind there's gonna be two tabs on the left side here that kind of secures it in place. So as you're popping this off, you're gonna to have to apply some pressure towards the left side there to kind of get those tabs to pop loose. And just take your time here and don't be in a hurry because the latches are also located in this area and you don't wanna cause any damage to those. So just go nice and slow. And I just fast forwarded everything so I made it look a lot easier than it actually is. Now it's time to make some cuts to this inner lid and this hole is also gonna give us enough room to install a portable hard drive if we choose. And be careful with the rest of the case because there is some parts inside there that you could lose, so just keep that in the open position and set that to the side. Here's a look at the area I'm gonna be cutting, and if you need to later, you can go ahead and pause it right here so you can read all these measurements. And to cut this, I'm just using a mini Dremel with a cutting blade. And here's how it should look after you're done cutting it. And this is pretty thick plastic, so it might take you a while. There's also a tab that's located on the same piece that we're gonna to wanna to cut off because it does interfere with some of the wires. And all I wanna do here is just cut this flush so it doesn't stick out or protrude. And here's how it should look when you're done cutting it. Now this next step is optional, but if you want a functional power button that you can use from the outside of the case, then you wanna follow these instructions. And for this, I'll be using a tactile micro momentary push button switch. And to make this function, I'll be using the reset button that's already built into this case. So the reset button has a notch that pushes through this hole located right here when you press it down. And this is exactly where you want to place your micro momentary switch. You just want to center the switch directly on top of this hole. So how this works is when the momentary switch is located right here and this is all put back together and you push that reset button, it comes in contact with the momentary switch which works as a power button. So for the switch you will have to do a little bit of soldering. You will have to solder two connections to this 
and to connect it to that Odroid XU4 board, you're gonna have to have some two millimeter connections. It is a little bit smaller than Raspberry Pi connections. I believe those are 2.5 millimeter. So the connections you're looking for are two millimeter. So I got my two wire connections soldered in place. Now it's time to go ahead and glue the momentary switch on top of that hole. And to glue this, I'm just gonna use a hot glue gun. And you wanna make sure that glue does not get too high. And as you can see here, I also glued the wires in place. And on the opposite end, this will actually be a disconnect point, and I'll cover that here in just a few. And this is the actual reset button that's part of the case, and we're gonna have to mod this, and what we wanna do is actually cut this flush. So this step here could get a little bit touchy, but what we wanna do is go ahead and cut it flush, and then we're gonna put that case together and test it out, and make sure it's functioning. If it's not functioning, we might have to cut just a little bit more away from where that knob was. So now it's time to test it out, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that reset button back in place, and then put that lid back on. And for the lid, I'm just gonna put a couple screws in place just so I can test it out. I don't wanna go ahead and fully secure it yet until I know it works. So I'm just gonna put a few screws on the outside edges. And luckily for me, the switch worked first try, but the way the leverage works with the switch, you do have to push towards the right side of it to make it function. If you push on the left side of the switch or even the center, sometimes it does not come in contact with that momentary switch. But if you push to the right of the switch, it easily makes contact. And that's just the way the leverage works with this reset button. And if you notice here, I added some extensions to the wires that connect to that momentary switch. Now this wasn't necessary, I just wanted to make the wires just a little bit longer, but I also want to make a disconnect point so I don't have to disconnect from the XG4 every time I want to take the wires apart. I can just disconnect them here. When you're ready to connect the wires to the XG4, the connection points are going to be 1 and 12. And it doesn't matter if you mix the wires up or not because all it's going to do is bridge the two points together. So when you hook up a power button this way, it functions the same exact way as the built-in power button that's located on the XU4. So for now, I'm just gonna disconnect these wires. I just wanted to show you how to do this so when we get to that point, you'll know how. The next step is getting power to the case, and I actually did buy an adapter so I could plug my Odroid XU4 power supply directly into the case. So I thought this would be an awesome solution to get power running to my case for the Odroid XU4, but unfortunately it will not work because the circuit board that's inside this restricts the power to a 5 volt 2 amp output and the Odroid XU4 needs 4 amps to work properly, so using it this way will not work. So the simplest solution I came up with to get power to my Odroid was to simply just drill a hole through the case located right here. And what I did was I measured 8 inches over, then just drilled right through the center right here. And for the hole, I ended up drilling a half inch hole, which is fairly large, but it needed to be big enough so that cord could slide in and out with no issues. Now you wanna be careful when you drill in this hole not to get too close to the bottom of the case because there is some wires located there that you could damage. And right now we don't need that power cable, so we can just go ahead and remove it and set it to the side until we're ready for it. Now it's time to get that XU4 inside the case, but we're gonna need a few adapters to get that plugged in. You'll need a mini female HDMI adapter by standard mail. And we're also going to need a female micro USB by standard male USB adapter. And for this cable, so we can make some more room inside the case, it'd be a good idea to remove the sheathing right here on the ends. And it's pretty easy to do, you can just use an X-Acto knife. Now it's time to fit the XU4 inside the case, and we're going to go ahead and start plugging in some cables. So we'll start with the HDMI cable first. So the mini end of this plugs into the case itself, and then the opposite end plugs into the Odroid XU4 board. Now we're going to plug in the female micro USB end to the case and the other end right here. Now it's time to go ahead and plug in an ethernet cable. If you don't have one, you can go ahead and skip this step. But what we're doing now is making sure we have proper fitment with all the cables before we secure the board. In order to use the USB 3.0 port, you will have to use a right or left angle adapter. This particular one is a left angle adapter and I'm using that with a USB 3.0 thumb drive. Now, if you don't plan on using the USB 3.0 ports, then you don't have to worry about this, but if you do want access to them, you're gonna have to use an angle adapter of some sort. Now that I have everything plugged in and in place, I've determined where I want the board to be secured, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark these holes so I can get this board secured. And this step is also not necessary, but I do recommend it, otherwise your board's not gonna be secure and it can move back and forth. And here's a close look at one of the holes I marked, and to secure this, I'm gonna use some very small bolts and nuts. And I'm gonna drill the holes slightly smaller than the bolts, that way the bolts can thread inside the case. And here's a look at the holes I have to drill through. And for now, I'm just gonna secure this with two screws. Also at this point, if you wanted to, you could drill a couple larger holes through the bottom of the case to give it some more ventilation. It's not necessary, but it could only help. Now it's time to secure the Odroid XU4 to these bolts with a couple of nuts. And I just wanna hand tighten these. I don't wanna over tighten these at all. I just wanna get them just barely stubbed with my hands. 
If you were to over tighten these, that could cause damage to the board and possibly crack it. Now it's time to go ahead and plug all your cables back in, including that power cord. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but the USB cable that plugs in inside this case actually gives power to the front USB ports. So you can use those for controllers or whatever you choose. And I'm demonstrating here that I can unplug my USB 3.0 adapter whenever I need to. So I do have good access to that. And now it's time to go ahead and plug in that power button that we made earlier to pins one and 12. And we'll go ahead and zoom out so you can get a look at everything. Now, if you wanna go ahead and hook up a portable hard drive, we do have room with that hole that we cut earlier. So this is a Seagate portable hard drive. This is one terabyte, and this will fit in the top of the case right here. So that's why I cut this hole just a little bit oversized. That way we can fit something like this inside there. So it'll slide in like this, and then we'll push it towards the center. And now I'm gonna use a right angle USB 3.0 six inch extension. And with all that leftover slack from the USB cables, I just stuff that inside that hole and it fits no problem. And here's how it should look with all the cable stuffed away. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this and show you it latches with no issues. Now keep in mind, when you're using a larger portable hard drive, the standard five volt, four amp will not be enough power. You will have to get a larger power supply if you're gonna be using a larger portable hard drive. For myself, I'm plenty happy enough just using a USB 3.0 thumb drive. It does the job just fine. I can easily remove that thumb drive whenever I wanna add games, so for me, it's really handy. For a controller, I'm using this wireless Mad Cat Street Fighter controller that has a USB receiver and it works great. And for Wi-Fi access, I'm using this small USB receiver that plugs right into my controller port. You can also buy a USB powered Neo Geo arcade stick, but they are kind of costly. They're right around 40 bucks, but they do work great. So for this build, the power button that's on the front of the console does not have any function. The power button is actually the menu button that's located on the top. And for the HDMI output, you will need one more adapter. You're gonna need a mini male HDMI by female HDMI standard. So now it's time to test out that power button. I'm gonna go ahead and press it and shut it down, then give it a few seconds. Then when I go to turn it back on, I wanna hold it for about a second and a half and it should kick right back on. Now that boot up screen should pop right up and there it is. So now I have a completely functional console with two USB controller ports in the front and I can easily add games to my USB 3.0 thumb drive. Plus, I have plenty of room if I want to add a bigger portable hard drive in the future. Now it's time to go ahead and power this up and test out a few games. Here's the game Metal Slug, and I've tested this game and all the sequels, and they all seem to play just fine. But what I think Neo Geo was most known for back then was its great 2D fighting games. They had so many great series. They had King of Fighters, Samurai Showdown, Fatal Fury, The Art of Fighting, the Last Blade, In World Heroes, just to name a few. All right, everyone, it's time for me to go. If you like that video, please click that like button. If you wanna hear more from me, please subscribe. And if you wanna help support the channel, you can now find me on Facebook and Patreon. Have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.